Hi folks, this is Mrs. Leeson, and um, I'm going to start this lesson with you. Uh, you have a sub, so I'd like you to listen to everything she says, obviously, or he says. Um, I would like you to have your binders closed right now. And let me remind you, when I teach in class, when I'm talking, you're listening, you're not writing, you're not racing to finish, you're not challenging me. So I'd like you to take the same approach here. Your binders are closed right now, you are just listening. And any time that I'm talking, you are just listening. Your pencils are down. Uh, I will instruct you to pause the video as needed. This is lesson 3.2a, which is repeating groups. Uh, I know what's coming, so I, I do have some things that I'd like to add in that are not part of the lesson. So just listen and do as I ask you to do. And uh, it'll all become clear in a couple of lessons. All right, so this idea of repeating groups, we have this key for tiles. We've got 1 and negative 1, x and negative x. And for the purposes of this discussion, we have also created an imaginary y tile. And y is a variable as well, so we don't know how long it is. It's sort of arbitrary. We're going to make them longer than the x tiles. The first problem says model 2x plus 2y. So I need, I know that I need two x's and two y's. So I'm going to write an x, an x, a y, and a y. And remember, we always have to label our x and y tiles. We don't have to label our ones tiles or our unit tile. All right, so this is obviously a representation of two x's and two y's, but what I'd like you to, you to consider is trying to make your model as square as possible. So if I were to draw a perimeter around this, is this as square as I can get it? So with that thought in mind, I'm going to show you what I'm looking for. We're going to take these y tiles and put them next to the x tiles to make the most square arrangement that we can. So I've got my x and my y, my x and my y, and if I didn't have space in between these, you could see this was closer or is closer to being a square than what I had before. So that's what I'm looking for, the most square representation. All right, so there's 2x plus 2y. Can you write 2x plus 2y in a different way? And if so, how? So this idea, what I want you to be thinking of, is not only the properties that we've uh, used, but also the idea of repeated grouping. So I can write uh, x plus x plus y plus y, and that's obvious. I can use the commutative property of addition to reverse the terms 2y plus 2x. And I can use the commutative property to reverse this expression as well. But I can also see that I end up having, looking back at my model, two groups of x and y. So that's where we're going today, is two groups of x and y. We're repeating groups. So x and y, x and y. So with these thoughts in mind, I would like you to do with, uh, on your own, excuse me, on your own, number two and number three on the next page. Number two and number three on the next page. So pause your video and on your own, do those two. When you're finished, put your pencil down. And when most people are finished, the sub will start the video. Okay, so you can see here what I did with number two. And again, I'm trying to make the model the most square. So if I were to draw a perimeter around my model, it would be pretty close to a square. Um, lots of different ways to write 4x plus 12. Um, the, way, the way that I would prefer that you write it is this way. I hope you came up with this one. And you can see in my square um, image here, my square modeling, I'm going to take that square away. And you can see I could almost put, or I can put, parentheses around my groupings. So there's a group, there's a group, there's a group, and there is a group. So I'm, I made it deliberately this way so that I could have four groups of x plus 3. So it's four groups of x and four groups of 3 which is what this expression says. On the next page, I'm, I'm thinking the same way, but this time they told me to model five groups of x plus 1. So remember the number in front tells you how many groups, and you put parentheses around uh, the grouping to show grouping, and this is why we put parentheses around the grouping. When I simplify this model, what I'm looking for is the expression that says five 
uh, excuse me, 10x plus 5. And I get that by counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 x's and 5 1's. That's my simplified expression. There are many, many different ways of writing this expression, but that's the one that I want you to focus on. All right, so with that in mind, would you please do, um, pause the video, do number 4 and 5 and 6. 4, 5, and 6. Uh, and this time I want you to do them on your own and then discuss uh, number 5, uh, actually number 4, 5, and 6 with your shoulder partner. So pause the video now, please. Okay, folks, one thing I forgot to mention in number three is the directions, which I'm always talking to you about reading, it says to model and then simplify. So in number three, by counting up the tiles, we simplify and get the expression 10x plus 5. So that's really important. In number four, when you model four groups of 3x minus 2, remember it's four groups of 3x plus negative 2, which helps me avoid taking away two positive tiles. Because if I have to take away two positive tiles, I need zero pairs. So I'm going to be using this expression in my modeling, which is okay for us to do now, um, and it makes sense for our algebra tiles. Here's my most square representation, and notice that I have parentheses because I am talking about groups here. When I simplify, I count up the tiles. I have 12 x tiles and 8 negative tiles. That's the first way that you see here in my counting. 8 negative tiles. Now what I really want you to, tra to transition to is avoidance of these double signs plus a negative. How do we simplify that? We change it to, to minus. So that is, excuse me, is my most simple expression, 12x minus 8. And here are two other equivalent expressions. There's that word equivalent again. So when you simplify, I'm looking for you to um, not have double signs in your final answer. Please make a note of that on your own paper. Number five, um, the first no, the number in front of the parentheses tells you how many groups there are and whether we add or take away those groups. Uh, so far, all we've done is add. The subtraction is coming. The taking away is coming, and it is more challenging. When you use algebra tiles, use spacing. Uh, remember to make your model the most square. And when you're drawing the models to show grouping, use parentheses. Use parentheses, and that is a requirement in this modeling. Okay, on the next page, uh, modeling this problem, 3 times 2x minus 5, again, we have parentheses around our model. We've made it the most square, which you'll notice the pattern is that you start with the x tiles and you put the associated 1s tiles next to them, and that will make your model the most square. And I'm going to draw the perimeter for you so you can see that. I also have parentheses around each group. Uh, and I don't want to take away five positive tiles by making five pairs of zero pairs. How many of you did that? Okay, so I'm going to give you an easier way. So if we write it as three groups of 2x plus negative 5, because this minus sign means plus the opposite, plus a negative, then we don't have to take away tiles. This is the approach I'd like you to use because it's simpler. And then when we simplify the expression, we count up the tiles. We have 6x tiles and 15 negative 1s tiles. This second boxed expression is the most simple. Okay, moving forward, um, 7 and 8 we've just talked about, so I'm not going to do that. So you are going to work with your shoulder partner um, and be talking about no, uh, alternating back and forth, here's how I'm going to model number 9, number 10, number 11. The directions say to draw a model for each expression. Be sure to clearly show the groups. You're going to make your model most square. You're going to use parentheses. Then you're going to rewrite the expression in simplest form and two rules. Count up the tiles. The x tiles come first. The second rule is do not be taking away uh, tiles. So think, rewrite that or think of that as adding negative tiles. So please do numbers 9 and 10 alternately with your shoulder partner. And then I'm going to ask the sub to call on individuals to give answers for these three, 9, 10, and 11. Please pause the video now. 
Okay, so here are my um, answers and my models. Make sure that your partner has parentheses around each group. Make sure that your partner has labeled each X tile. And make sure that your partner has two negative tiles in number 11, two negative tiles in each group. That's important. All right, now here are my simplified answers, 3X plus 6. But what I want you to look at is this line. I have three groups of X and three groups of 2, which gives me 3X plus 6. In number 10, my answer is 6x plus 10, but look at this line. Two groups of 3x and two groups of 5. For number 11, my answer is 9x minus 6, but again, look at this line. Three groups of 3x and three groups of negative 2. That's the pattern that I'm asking you to notice so that you can do these without models. All right, so on the next page is do these without models. So be thinking about what you just did. Be thinking about these groups. Um, number one says, oh, the directions say simplify each expression. Your final answer should have no parentheses. This is the key to knowing whether you've simplified or not. Uh, and also be thinking in your mind what this picture would look like. So four groups of x plus two. I have four groups of x. That will give me four x's. And in my groups are twos. So four groups of two would give me eight ones. My final answer is 4x plus 8. I'm not going to model. Um, when I get to these problems that have uh, fractions and decimals, we can't really model those. That's hard to do. So we're just going to be thinking about, uh, in number 15, 0.4 groups of 5. So this is 0 0.4 groups of 5 and 0 0.4 groups of 3 F tiles. 0 0.4 times 5 is 2. 0 0.4 times 3 is 1.2. And I have my F. So what we're, do we're doing here is multiplying the coefficient of the F term. So be thinking about your vocabulary as well. And then as we go down to the bottom, um, these are the really challenging problems. I'm having trouble making my um, page scroll down. Hold on a second. So the really challenging problems come when you put all of these together. Um, I want you to talk about order of operations and have a good discussion with your partner, but you're just watching now. So on number, number 19, sorry, let me see if I can get back to it. How embarrassing. Number 19, we've got two groups that are being added together. We've got seven groups of 2x plus 3 and three groups of x plus 15. You need to show multiple lines of work. So um, this is how this one would look. We'd have seven groups of 2x plus seven groups of 3 and three groups of x and three groups of 15. I'd like you to write that for now. Uh, pretty soon you'll be able to go to the next step, which is just going straight from the original problem to 14x plus 21 plus 3x plus 45. This is not simplified because I still have terms that are like terms. I always combine my like terms. This is a time-honored way of finding the ones that are alike. So one line under each x term two lines under each constant, and now I can go back and combine those mentally. 14x plus 3x, I add the coefficients for 17x. 21 plus 45 are my constants, that is 66. I can't simplify that any further. I can't add an x tile to a ones tile. All right, the more challenging ones come for number 21, and then I'm going to let you work with your shoulder partner. So please watch this one. Number 21 is the most challenging kind of problem, and my 8th graders, last year's 7th graders who are now 8th graders will tell you this. So here I'm going to be dis uh, distributing. I don't know if I've used that word yet, but I'm going to use it now. I'm going to take 8 groups of 2x, and I'm going to take away 8 groups of 6. So my minus sign that I have here is right here. And then I'm going to take away three groups of 4x and take away three groups of 1. Notice when I said and, that's my plus sign. 
I can eliminate that. I can just say minus 3 times 1. But sometimes saying and 